cross-examine. I am Sabbatical Slim, a.k.a. Kirk Kennedy, a.k.a. The Frustrated Christian. And I'm with Sabbatical Strack, a.k.a. The Wolverine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is how we do it. We in here. Sabbatical Strack. <laughs> Man, we chilling, man. This is this is a this is some different episodes. If you're listening to this episode and you're newer to the Cross Examine family, this is what we mean by sabbatical. We do an episode every week, and we typically hit current events in the culture, and and sometimes we tie them. Oftentimes, we'll either tie them into hip hop in some way, or you know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll sort of incorporate some of hip hop's worldview into what's happening in the culture, but. I am a pastor, a full-time pastor on staff, and August is a sabbatical month for me, which I'm doing no ministry, no nothing. So Strack and I just did a couple of episodes, really for, mainly for our Patreon supporters. So our Patreon supporters, we have 20 Patreon supporters at this point right now, 21. We got a new one today. So we got 21 Patreon supporters. Yes. Yes. The Rhythm, The Rebel. So we got, we got 21 MVPs and we're doing shows, full episodes for the month of August just for them. So you have to be a Patreon supporter. So this episode at some point will will terminate earlier than, it will than, you, than you wanted to. Yes, it will self-destruct. Earlier than you wanted to. Hopefully than you wanted to. Then you had to jump on the Patreon and find out what you missed. Yeah, take it back to Inspector Gadget days. Take it back. Hello, Beat Chief. Your chest if you know about Inspector Gadget. Why is Gadget still alive? <laughs> yeah, that was my joint. That was the joint, man. Dr. Claw. I want Gadget. Gadget. <laughs> that was the joint. I used to love him. <laughs> Hello, Chief. <laughs> Dunka, 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 Inspector Gadget. That joke was the cartoon was dope. The movies were stupid. Yeah, and the, the movies were whack. The cartoon movies, was dope though. The movies dishonored the Lord. But <laughs> but but we we're doing these so sabbatical episodes are not episodes that are technically a part of Cross Examine. So we have a different theme song and so forth. So what you've heard is not the typical Cross Examine theme song. We will return in September for season three. But we're doing a couple of episodes, three or four episodes in the time that we're off just to keep the party going because we also care about you too, non-Patreon supporters, because you all are also, you all have made our downloads. Uh, we've just been really blessed by the amount of downloads that we're getting for the type of show that we do. Uh, we're, we're very encouraged that we get as many downloads as we do. So please go to iTunes and leave a five-star review and leave us uh, some, some thoughts, encouragement, all that review, we would appreciate that and share the episodes as you see fit. Having said that, my good man, Strack. We're yes, going to talk sir. about something. We've kind of alluded to this topic, right? We're keeping it hip-hop, right? So these are mostly hip-hop inspired because a lot of times during the season, particularly the last, what, four months? Besides the yeah. last four or five months, besides my album and a philosophy, Go pick that up. Go pick that up. You gotta buy it from iTunes. You can't go to iTunes. You have to go to the iTunes store on Apple Music to pick that up. And it's on Bandcamp. If you need to know where, email me at curvyrathandgrace.com. I'll let you know when. Don't tell you where I am. So we had that, and then we had the I Rap For Real contest that there was a <laughs> lot of centered around hip hop. So we did talk about hip hop, but a lot of what we talked about were cultural things because the world was just crazy. The world has... We didn't have much choice. We just had no choice. I mean, there was no way we could just do that and just enter into a, a different world. So anyway, but this these sabbatical episodes will be more about hip-hop because that's something that we love and we don't want to presume that the people, you, the listener, understand hip-hop in the same way and the, know things about hip-hop. So we're going to talk about something that I was inspired by. I was looking at YouTube the other day, uh, and I saw a uh, a, a thing, a, a, a video clip with a thumbnail, and it said "rap albums with no skips." And I thought, hmm, how many rap albums have I thought there were no skips, no skipperinos, none of them? That's and rare. I thought, and I couldn't name many that I thought had no skips. Now. 
and then I'll come back to this in a second. They, they, some albums became that way, but I remember thinking initially, I can't remember what album I just had no skip to. And so I decided to click on the link and watch it, and I watched some of the video. I didn't watch the whole thing because the dude was just a little bit goofy for me in terms of his evaluation of albums. And then some of the stuff was more underground, like just personal stuff. It wasn't as mainstream as See, I thought hold it might on. have been. You gotta, you gotta tell me when you do that. Because I endured the whole thing thinking you watched the whole joint. Nah, man. I, I, I was trying to. Now, I did say this. I did download the IDK joint because it sounded like a tough joint. And then okay. I found out he's from Maryland. <laughs> He's from yeah, around my that. way. I saw that. It's funny. He's the same. That's the same album that I was like, hold up. I might need to listen to that joint and see what's good. Cause hey, this joint is tough. I listened to it a little bit. I'm banging with it. I was like, he's from Maryland too. He's from Raleigh in PG County. He opened yeah. up the joint saying he's from Maryland. He actually so, remind me a little bit of Kendrick. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to really, I'm probably giving some listens a day, man. Like I might. You know, what I do is I play like I've been listening to you. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold Hey, good <laughs> interview, man. I with on uh Reform Rasa. I, I'm oh, almost done still listening, but like I you know, you know how like you and Floor, y'all listen while y'all doing food, so you can be a bit distracted, but you still listen. Right. Like so I usually play like I jump I call it the stick. I jump on the stick, which is basically I'm playing Xbox. Give me the joystick. So I might be playing something against my son with my son, or I might just be playing by myself. So I've been peeping that joint, man. It's been a good, it's been a good joint, man. I'm banging with it. That's you know what I'm saying. Glad. It's good. I like when you get to do interviews like that, where you people get to hear parts of you that you know. This was stuff I ain't know. I was like, oh, that's what's up. Yeah, that's dope. You know. And I, I was gonna do this, but we ain't gonna do this this episode. We might wait till the next episode. <laughs> I was because I heard you talk about Romans seven. And how it just, and I just love just the narrative, the story behind your Romans Seven song on Christ Centric's album about Romans. Just the way, just how you felt like the Lord was just like, yeah, this is for me. And you talk about man, that's been my story of my life. I'd love to hear. We ain't gonna do it this episode. We might do it next episode. I want to hear you say what you think Romans Seven is about. Who is who is he? Who is the, the <laughs> I of Romans Seven? So I, I don't remember what the song as much, uh, but I remember I remember it. But I don't remember where you landed. But we we can come back to that. But that's a that's a good. Do we interview. have Maybe. different views on Romans seven? Huh? Do we have different views on Romans seven? We probably do. We probably really. Do. We probably do. Yeah. Yeah, we probably do. I talked through. I did three messages in that joint and laid out for my church who I think the I is in Romans seven. Okay. And. Uh, uh, so we might just might I have to cut into it. I can't believe we haven't talked about that at all. I yet. know we haven't. You know, I, I was just, and, then, and that's why I thought I gotta bring this up because I was listening to the joint. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. I wonder, I wonder where Strack lands on that. And because you didn't really say where you like, you just talked about the the way the Lord guided and gave you that, and how you just resonated with that, and just were grateful to the Lord for that particular. Uh, chapter of the book and just how you resonate with it and so right. but, but no nah, it's a good I mean I haven't I'm still listening but it's a good interview man I bang with it I bang with it I just and because I know you I imagine certain things like your dad talking to you about well, look at your life and you just being affected you know and just thinking about yeah that. I was and rocked man I was rocked yeah, that day bro. I yeah, realized man you know what in season 3 we need to do we've shared our testimonies in certain regards but I don't know if we really, really just sat down and been like, well, like, like I think we're going to do an episode called I Grew Up With Hip Hop. And one episode is going to be just your narrative and one's going to be mine. And we just bring the listener really, really in. Because I don't think a lot of people heard that stuff. I, I mean, yeah. Reform Rasa got that. I don't know right. if a lot of people, because I was sitting there like, dang, I'm all, I'm all into the joint. You know what I'm saying? Eyes watering. <laughs> so I'm sitting here like, hold on, man. I don't know how many of our listeners, and I don't know what kind of numbers they do, and I hope they're doing big numbers. Uh, but too. I wonder how many of our fans and listen to know that story, know that side of well, how you got there and all of that stuff. So that might that's something that we should jump into. Yeah, it's good, man. It's always good to, to testify. 
You know what I'm saying? It is, ultimately, man. It, it ultimately, is. our testimony is is the gospel, the blood of Christ. It is, but um, there's spe- there, but there are specifics though. The Lord but doesn't. Yeah, we, we exactly. You, the specifics you, is what Shai, the Lord you uses. Hear my testimony, read Ephesians two. <laughs> yeah, I get it. The specifics but, is what the Lord uses to to build up others and draw them in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I believe. And that. I think that's, that's I mean that's what Paul said to Felix, right? That's 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 Acts what twenty six. Yeah. Well, he talking. He's like, listen, man, my my, you know. You knew me, you know, I was this, right. I was that. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, so even that aspect of his life, he, he thought was worthy of God using to help someone else understand what it is. Yeah, it's before Agrippa, right? It was Agrippa, King Agrippa. It's like, it's like, hey, listen, man, you know me. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that dude. I'm the dude who was on the other side of it, you know? So yeah. I the think that, that stuff is dope. So yeah, it was a good episode, but we, you know, We'll come back to that, you know, season three. I want to hear when you at Romans seven, seven, Word. you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> we'll probably one... talk about it next weekend. <laughs> I know, right? That might be it. Next episode, we'll drop it in. So I, I think, I think, um, as I was watching that video, as I, I didn't really watch the whole joint, my, my bad, it was 19 minutes. I, I thought it was going to be something different. So after watching, after the IDK and it was going into the next one, I was like, okay, now I don't really got the patience this um i figured you might just do the same my bad if you didn't but um <laughs> hey so real quick where's the rest of the video go so is it all just like kind of um abstract kind of albums that you would just never listen to or heard of um he nah he did Tyler the creator he did okay, 36 yeah. chambers okay he did that um, okay That's what's up. and then some other dude named salva i don't know who that guy is exactly so the dude who be giving back rubs or something on 12th street yeah so the, the breakdown on 36 chambers was dope though Okay, I might go back and listen to that. I want to hear how I wouldn't mind hearing how he how he thought he, about he it. He made he had Flora wanting to go listen to the album. He was oh, like, "Oh wow, it's like that." Okay, well, shoot, yeah. I might <laughs> I might have check his joint out then because um yeah because it's you know that's what's up. No, that's that's what's up. So yeah, so anyway, that that concept just made me think about just man, what albums do I have? And then it just made me think about what is like a classic album, like what what. I mean, we've talked about replay value. We've talked about the art of listening. We've talked about the MC, you know, the artist, the you know, the lyricist, the the, the rapper. We've talked about all those categories this season. But I don't know if we've really talked about like a classic album. And in fact, even season one, I don't remember us. We talked about music we like and albums we like, but I don't ever remember us talking about what actually is a classic album like what makes a classic album what makes a project like okay yeah this is this is this is the one and i think and so i started thinking about it i thought man let's let's have a conversation about that let's talk through what is a classic album and now people may have different criteria for this i know one criteria that i've always often heard was that consensus like people tell you you have a classic like an artist can't say he has a classic album. And I and I, I don't know where you're at. I don't want to hear where you're at with that. I agree with that. I think you can think you have a classic album. I don't think it's wrong to think that. But I think ultimately, other people have to confirm that. Because the artist will be like, oh, this is a classic. Every album I do is a classic. Yeah, I think I consensus is hell, is necessary. It's definitely necessary. I mean, yeah. if, if you're the only one who thinks your album is classic, then... Yeah, you need to revisit your uh, criteria. Yeah. Because yeah. every, everybody collectively, you, know, you have a body of hip-hop fans. Yeah. And hip-hop fans collectively um, should be able to say it's a classic hip-hop album. You mm-hmm. know, it, it, Maybe not everyone will exactly agree, but right. across the board... But of of the people who have consensus. heard it. Of the people who have heard it. That's what I'm think, saying, yeah. Yeah, 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 right. Because I think you can't... Some people just don't have like the platform and so you can say, oh, that's a classic album, but you just never really heard this, so you did, you're not aware of it as much. Right. Yeah, right. it just, of course, if, in order for you to say it's classic, you need to be able to hear it. <laughs> so right. that's yeah. a, that's a, that's for sure. Um, well, I don't mean but yeah. you, but I mean, like, say some, say if you say, like, when we go through our list, you might say an album is a classic, and someone else is like, yeah, right. Now, it doesn't mean it's subjective on one level, but it could just be you haven't really heard this project. Right, yeah, that's true. That's, that's what I'm saying. So a, yeah, so you can't really say it's not so subjective, but on one level, it's it's still it's still and some some stuff is 
I think some albums are typically seen by many as, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, hip hop heads usually have a, you know, a standard that most people would agree on Mm -hmm. as far as classic albums. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, replay value is there. No skips is there. You know, um, how they affect the culture, how they, you know, we're probably going to get into that. So, right. So let me. So before we even get into what is a classic album, I'm gonna ask you just randomly: Have you? Do you think? Do you think you've done a classic album yet? <laughs> do you think um, you've done a classic album yet? Or or and if and or do you think you have it in you to make a really classic album? Yeah, I definitely think I have it in me. Um, yeah. I I think personally just my opinion and, and you know from those who've heard it and loved that project my first album i thought was classic album so you know it's 19 songs it's it's all over the place emotionally it was dealing with What's real life issues uh not the norm yeah it dropped in 08 um so is that is that available not, anywhere yeah it's available you can get it on Bandcamp. okay we gonna give me Shaq's gonna give me the link to this. This is what I'm asking y'all to do. For those that are listening, go to Bandcamp, get this project, listen to it, and then I want your honest opinion. Was this a classic album? That's what we want. <laughs> do it. Go to Bandcamp. Track will give me the link. The link will be in the description. Wherever you're listening to this, it'll be on. If you're, if it's on YouTube, or if you're listening on Facebook, or if you're listening in the, uh, the, the, the wherever you downloaded it from, the link will be in the description. Get this. I want to see what y'all think. If y'all now think you, it's a classic, you, you gotta listen to the entire thing. Yes, you can. Song listen, you, after song after song. Yeah, it's 19 you, songs. You can't. You have to listen to it all. And there's you. there's a lot of material there, a lot of personal material that I went through. I mean, that's when I went through my. Uh, my son's mother and I were married at the time. Mm, right. And, you know, oh, so we went through... talking about a lot of that stuff on it. I talk about my emotions. Ooh. There and what I dealt with, you know, how I wanted to react to things and how the Lord the suppressed. Tip and Kim, huh? There was a lot of stuff going on at that time, man. Right. So it actually starts off really happy. And, mm-hmm. and like, I'm here, I'm back as an artist. Um, you know, cause I, cause that was the first project I did since the Lord had snatched me up. Right. So the first half of the album pretty much, or the first, like the third of it is just really expressive, enjoying the Lord and what he's doing with me. And then I begin to wrestle with myself and with sin and then boom, this thing drops and everything just kind of, you know, explodes and, mm-hmm. and I start I have a song on there where it's me wrestling, battling my flesh, like lyrically, mm. you know, so it's, there's a lot going on in that album. So just be mindful, you know, as you listen, this is all real stuff. It's right. nothing made up. Yeah. It's not theatrics. For sure. Yeah. Not theatrics. So yeah, I think it's a classic. I mean, I think Windows and Mirrors is a classic. That's my joint though, but you know, I, I'm... I'm very uh, biased when it comes to my projects. Yeah, yeah. I like <laughs> Windows and Mirrors a lot, man. I got You know what? I'm going to actually go back and let... Well, I want to hear it. I want to go... I'm going to get this album. The uh, This joint. Um, what's the name of it again? The Beat Goes On. No, nah, no. Nah, that's the new one. Of course, I'm going to get that. Not the, the norm. Not, Not the, the norm. norm. I wanna, I'm going to get that after we... You know, when we when we done, I'm going to go get that joint and see what I think, if, it, if I think it's a classic. Um, I liked Windows and Mirrors a lot, but I think I'm going to have to listen to Not the Norm and then Windows and Mirrors again to see if it... Because sometimes I listen to music because I like the artist or respect the artist. And if I bang with them, I just put it in that category. I bang with them. I don't right. I don't always... I'm, I'm, I'm starting to now, because of this show, actually, because we do the show, I'm starting to listen to music a little bit more objectively. Gotcha. You know, like, okay, I like the artist, but let me really listen and see what's what's going on right now, you know? That's good. What yeah, are we that's talking good. about? Like, what's going on? And I want people to do that for me. I don't want people to be like, oh, that's Kirk K. That's my dude. I love it. Like, if you don't like it, you don't like it. doesn't mean I'm going to change it. It just means you just didn't like it, and that's fine. Because um, sometimes when you put out an album, you're already, the creative process is over. So you can't go back. I mean, I have, obviously, I can be like, hey, what you think of this and let you hear stuff. And that happens. Right. But 
But I, yeah, I'm gonna go back and listen to see. I did like Windows and Mirrors though. At the time, I remember saying that joint was better than Eminem had dropped his project. And yeah. I said, I thought your joint, I didn't even really know you then actually, to be honest. Nah, just we just we had just communicated on Facebook Messenger. Yeah, come through times. the form bars maybe. It. I think you had heard C4 it was like, man, I love this album or something like that. And then I ended up hitting getting that one. I was like, hey, I don't know about y'all. I think this album is better. And right. Then I was going back and forth with people. I was like, fam, you're not listening to what I'm listening to. That's why I said. I think he sounds like the Wolverine. That's what I think. I, th- I think I started the Wolverine back then. I think I said. <laughs> you might have. The, you might have. I said, listen to I the think, hunger. I think you actually like, sent that on the messenger to me. Yeah. Yeah, I might have said that. So that joy was, you know, who knew that the Lord, what the Lord was going to do with our friendship and how it would grow and develop. But yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go back and listen. I got time. I'm on sabbatical. I'm going to go back and yeah. see some things. You'll learn, you'll learn a lot about me on that project. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it because I learned a lot about you on the, on the, on the podcast. It's a classic album. Are we going to see if it's a classic? All right, let's jump into how would you define a classic album? What does an album need to be? I think to some degree there's subjectivity here, but I actually think the subjectivity is more in personal taste and not in criteria, if that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. I I think most people would agree with the same criteria, even if their observation, their actual what is a classic album is 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 subjective i think the criteria in many ways is pretty much much there so let's talk a little bit about what makes a classic album and then let's talk some classic albums of of and there's two there's a lot so we obviously ain't gonna get through every album that we think is a classic but I think um, I, there was a couple CHH ones that I have. Uh, I don't have many though, but I'm, I'm, I haven't been as much of a connoisseur of CHH as some other people. Even though I was doing it, there were times I just wasn't listening to it as much. So, but there's a couple albums that I think are classic as well. Um, in okay. CHH. But, but I mean, just in general. So when you think about a classic album. I'm gonna run through a couple categories and you tell me if you agree or would you, what you think about it. I think instant likability is is part of what makes an album classic. Yeah. And, by, and by instant likability, I mean, this is my personal opinion, obviously. I don't think a classic album grows on you. I think it's a good album, but I think a classic album has instant likability. Yeah. Like it's like, wow, I'm banging with this joint. And then immediate and then become, reaction. Yes. And it's I'm saying instant, right? So yeah. you it's instant like immediate instant likeability where you know you're you're vibing with it with it right away. And I because to, to me to be a classic, it builds on something that's already positive. Now albums have grown on me, right? So like the reason why we're gonna talk about classic albums instead of albums with no skippers, because there were albums that I don't know if I how many if I could say Many albums had a song where every song cranked me. I can't, I can't name a many. There's always a song or two I don't bang with. But when you listen to an album enough, or when time goes by, you just could listen to a whole album straight through like it's nothing. But when it came out, you might have skipped these two or three songs. But now, some years later, you've come to appreciate that music or that sound or whatever. So you can listen to it differently. So right. that's kind of sort of a... a um, What's it called? That's sort of throwback like ability. I'm talking about instant like ability. Like to be a classic album, there has to be some semblance of right now. And then when my visceral response is, I'm banging with this one. This one tough. This one tough. So you agree with that? Yeah, I definitely agree with that. All I right, know right me... away if an album's gonna be classic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unfortunately, bro. I mean, I mean, on some level, it, okay. Uh, let me push you on that, brother. So let's let's so fill that out again. Why why do you feel like you know that? Um, when I hear it, it's it's almost like um, it affects every part of me. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like mm. it, it it affects my all, like my ears, my heart, my mind. You know, I just get drenched in in what's going on here. So like, name one the, album that's done that. Like name one that you can think of that you know has has accomplished that 
I mean, right off the top, definitely 36 Chambers. Yeah, yeah, Wu-Tang. Yeah, right. it, was, it was right away from the gate, but also the Fugees. I mean... The score? The score. Oh, bro. Uh, okay, let's say no more. We're going to get to the... Never mind. We're going to get to the classic yeah, album. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I never mean, those mind. things did that. They did that immediately. Right, you know, it right, was right, like, right, right. As soon as you heard it, you was like, you knew you never heard nothing like this before. Right. And, and it just, it upped the standard. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, on, all right, so let's music. let's hold that, hold that, hold that, because you go, because then we're gonna we're gonna crush <laughs> the rest of it. Pink pink cookies in the plastic bag, getting hey. crushed by buildings, right? So, <laughs> so all right, the second thing, which is what you were alluding to, is it changes the game. A classic album changes the game, and right. by 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 changes the game, I mean in four particular categories, it changes the game sonically. So it's like, wow, like you just, the production, like just the way it sounds, the way it feels sonically, it does. Like I guess, like I'm, I'm gonna use a non hip hop example because I don't, I don't wanna, I wanna, we're gonna talk about classic albums in hip hop and I don't wanna talk these up and then can't talk about them later in a minute. But like a non hip hop album that did that for me was like Missy Elliott's joints. When Missy Elliott and Timberland came out, they just had a whole different vibe. Just the way they like when when she did I can't stand the rain, do do do. It's my window, and then her videos. There was so much about what Missy Elliott and Timberland were doing that it was just different, bro. Wait, I, wait, and, wait, and, wait, 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 wait. You said non hip hop? You don't consider those hip hop? Nah, not really. She was R and B. I think Missy was R and B. Missy Missy had some some a little bit of rapping, but nah, she was R and B though. I think I would call her, I mean, it was, so Mary J. Blige was sort of the queen of hip hop, R&B and soul or whatever. I think, I think she was under that, that vein. R&B, hip hop. I wouldn't call her a hip hop. When I, when I think of like classic hip hop albums, none of them come close to sounding like what Missy Elliott was doing. So I think yeah, she had I, no, elements of hip hop. But I, think I she agree with that part. R&B. I just, yeah. I would have, I would have thrown her more on the hip hop side, but that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, nah, I mean, for me, I didn't, but that's okay if we if we disagree on that. But but it just it was just such a different sound, I extremely thought, different. Yeah, real very different, real different, real different. Timberland even, uh, as a whole, I mean, he's just a different producer. Yeah, he's, man, he was just yeah, he just all his beats were the beats you make with your mouth on the table. That's what made it so dope. He just figured out how to make them <laughs> joints. <laughs> 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 You be doing it with your mouth, and then he figured out how to turn that joint into a real beat. You know what I'm saying? Bang, 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 bang. You know, he just figured out how to do it, bro. So it's like, man, I don't know. You know what? To his credit, to his credit, that's what he said. He said he would beat, and then he just tried to figure, how do I make this all the boom, 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 that was just what he would do with his mouth. And it's like, yeah, I remember doing beats Yo, like he's that. he's a genius because of that. He's Man, a what? genius. Is he? All right, That's so crazy. it changes the game sonically, and sonically just means how it sounds. I think right. it changes the game lyrically on some level. It doesn't necessarily have to change the game lyrically, but I think the, the lyrics pull you in in some way, shape, or form. So either it's punches, stuff you hadn't heard, maybe it's delivery, Maybe it's just you're drawn into like the stuff he's saying because son- and that's part of the sonic as well. It just sounds really good. It sounds good, and you really like what's happening. You know, your ears like what's happening right now. So I think it's sonically. I think lyrically. I think you, you know, I think when it's hip hop because hip hop is such an oral instrument, right? Your mouth is the main instrument. Even though we rap over beats and we do stuff, as y'all heard and sabbatical season episode one about beatboxing right there was a time when you could beatbox and not have anything else but just your mouth like your mouth and then you're rapping that was the whole joint and some of the most classic songs in hip-hop we talked about Lottie Dottie last season episode sabbatical season episode one where you saw that take place and and Lottie Dottie was a beatbox song all beatbox lyrics it just blew up for them so, but it's so lyrically, it it, 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 it it grabs you. I think intellectually, I think a classic album affects the way you think. Yeah. Right? I think it affects the way you actually process things when you hear a classic album. And, and then lastly, I think it, it connects to this. 
I think it it's it's it changes the game artistically. I think a classic album is is it makes you think about wow you you appreciate the artistry almost like in a movie. There are movies that I might not necessarily like. Like let me give you an example of a movie that does this. There's a movie called Children of Men. All right, this movie is about um, the world stopped having babies. And there was this organization that was, they had this black girl, she was pregnant with a baby. And people would have killed, all these organizations would have killed to get a hold of this woman. And there was a small faction of people, these, these rebels, that were sort of rebelling against the governmental authorities to try to get this woman to safety because she was pregnant. And the I think that the, the main character was a Clive um what's Clive his name? Owen. Clive Owen. Clive, he was the main yeah, dude. Clive Owen. I always yeah. tell one of our Patreon supporters, Josh Griffiths, he looks like Clive Owen. And um <laughs> he does to me. He does one hundred percent. Josh, if you're listening, Clive is your brother. I know he's related to you somehow. <laughs> yeah, I would have never need thought to, that. You need to get a couple of dollars from him. That dude owes you some money, man. He's your long lost brother. And so <laughs> <laughs> like in that movie, there was this iconic scene where it was like a there were two scenes that were crazy. They were all stuffed into this car, and then they were driving down this road, and then the car like something went in front of the car to stop the car from working, and then they started they saw all these people running down from both sides of this hill onto the road to attack them, and the and the cinematography was in the car. And I don't know, I think they put like a camera on the top of the car inside of it, but it was bananas, bro. And it was no cut scene, it was just like bananas. I just thought the cinematography in Children of Men was incredible, even though I wouldn't put it in like my top 50 movies. Maybe. Nah, it was a fun movie to watch, though. The idea itself, like the yeah, whole man. fantasy sci-fi thing was cool. Yeah, bro. But it wasn't... But, but, it, but artistically, it right. made me appreciate cinematography in ways. Well, a classic album does that musically. You appreciate the artistic ability. So it changes the game in, those, in that sense. All right? Um, I think a classic album doesn't even have to be my favorite album. Now that's going to be like, what? What do you mean? I don't think, because I don't think all of my favorite albums are necessarily classics. They're my, because to me, a favorite album is personal. Like if I'm a, if I have a style of rap, like a boom bap or this or that, like I might like certain things. Classic album doesn't have to be my favorite album, but it has to change the game on this criteria. And there are albums that I think fit that album that I would still listen to other albums over those for what they meant. Because an album that's my favorite, this is a thing people don't realize. Like, you see all these these things like, hey, who's, like, I, I'll see this on Reform Bars a lot. Who's, who's your, give me your top 10 albums all the time. And they'll put like Shy's Attributes of God is almost always in that category. And when people describe why, it's because that album explained things to them about God that affected the way they think about God. So there, so not only was it the album, but they're attached to the theology that they learned on that album. Right, what it did for them. What it did for them personally. And right. people say, have said that about a process of the pardon when I was voiced. They, I, I still have people asking, man, when can I, where can I get that album? And it's like, because of what it meant. I've had people hit me like, bro, that album introduced me to reform theology, stuff like that. So. That's cool. So that's, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a classic in and of itself. But it just means so it doesn't have to be my favorite album. But I think the artistry on a classic album has to make sense. I think for it to be a classic album, the artistry has to make sense. And what I mean is, even if it's kind of like you said about your first project, right? All over the place. Like the artistry is going to make sense because a classic album isn't a collection of just wild ideas thrown together. There is a there is an artistry that flows within a classic album that makes you think, okay, wow, this is this was this was put together well. I mean, the artistry makes sense. So by that I mean the album cover, 
the title of the album, it all just, it makes sense. When you hear the album, it makes sense. Right. This, this makes sense to me. This makes sense why, especially when you understand what it's about, because sometimes you don't always get to know what it was about, what a song was, what the album was about. But it makes sense. The, uh, the artistry of the project makes sense for it to be a classic album. And, and hip hop, I'm not saying, you know, you can listen to jazz or classic whatever, heavy metal albums, and they might just be like, ah, jazz, jazz, you know, just doing whatever they do, right? That's fine. But when it's hip hop, because it's so orally based, it's so vocally based, it's poetically based, it just, it makes sense. The artistry makes sense. And I think for me, lastly, the replay value is high. On a classic album, the replay value is high. Like, I can just throw this joint in and just vibe. Like, I think when replay value is high, to me, it's not just my, the ability, just the desire to play it again. But when an album is really a classic, I think it brings you back to how you felt. It brings you back to what, how you felt when you heard it. What was happening at that time? Like Definitely. a classic album has that element of how it affected me. Like it brings you back. Or like Nostalgia. a song, just like, like something. Like, oh my God, this used to be my joy when you hear a song come on. You just remember stuff, you know? Kind of like how we'd be like, where were you when 9 11 happened? Like, I remember where I was when I heard, you know, when you hear like the Benjamins. <laughs> You know, when you heard Biggie's joint, you know, where, where were you? When you heard not, nah, I remember, we'll get into that. So, so again, a classic album has high replay value, means you desire to play it more, but it also can bring me back. It, it can affect my mood. I can be like yes. in a situation, because I'm just like having a rough day, and I could throw on like a classic joint, and that joint, just, I just vibe out to it. It just, I can get into the, the mood of the album, and I'm just distracted by the other things that are happening. So these are what I think make a classic album. I'm sure there's more to the list. What, what, you you want to add anything to this track? Nah, that's that's it. I mean, you, you pretty much covered it. I think it is a lot of subjectivity, you mm -hmm. know, as far as the nostalgia aspect of it. Um, and, you know, the sound, what you like sonically. But that's where, that's where the consensus comes in. Right, yeah, yeah. All right, let's yeah, talk some classic albums, all right? Let's talk classic albums. You know, by God's grace, we happen to be some, we happen to have been in the game long enough to have heard quite a few music span over three, four decades, three different decades. So 80s, 90s, the 2000s, and then the 20, 2010s. So I've heard rap music in four different What's it called? I'm just said it. For a different uh, ten year span. <laughs> Decades? Decades. Seven. I'm, like, oh, I'm like Joe Biden right now. I can't remember. Yo. I'm like Joe Biden right now. Holy so like in, in four decades I've heard rap music. So You don't sniff, you tickle. You know who's saying parties, tickle party. That's what Joe Biden is doing, he's doing tickle party. All right, so let me start with you. What, what do you have any albums that you thought are classic from the '80s decade that you remember? Now you was a young boy, but just even looking back, hearing stuff later, even is there anything from the '80s that you felt like was a classic album? Nah, I can't. I can't go back that far. <laughs> I can't go back to the '80s, man. I can't even name I can't even name an album from the 80s except, really I mean ah uh, let me think hang on a sec here um <laughs> mm, pretty much mm, mm. yeah I'm, I mean what, when did Paid in Fool drop I was 80s that was 86 there you go there you go Paid in Fool Paid in Fool is a classic album Rakim made his mark, mm -hmm. no doubt. There's there's the one album I can name, cause I can't even name LL albums from back then. I mean, I don't think LL had any, to me. I don't think he had classics. He had some good music on his album because LL was so he was more about rapping for girls. Like he had this sort of dual-edged sword, right? 
I'm a, I'm a rough MC. Jack the Ripper. Jack, 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 Jack the Ripper. King Hercules. You don't hear that mama said, knock you out. Oh, right. you didn't even have that. I want a girl with extensions in her head. Bamboo earrings, at least two. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stay Yo, that alone. was a banger, though. Mm-hmm. Which one? That was a, that, when I'm alone in my room, sometimes I stare at the wall. That joint was banging. You didn't like that joint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't you sing at the floor? Isn't that how you got floor? You sang at the joint? No. Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> He was like, I need an around the way kid. I, was enjoying yeah, I, I got Flora by arguing with her over theological issues. That's how I got her. Mm, that's what I'm talking about. We was we was beefing. We was the beefing. caveman joint, huh? <laughs> you hit him over the head and then drag him into the cave, huh? <laughs> she was impressed by my persistence. Mm, she says over Rod's resistance, baby. Yeah. All right, so I can give you I'll give you a couple albums from the 80s that I think are classics. And a lot of albums in the 80s are not classics. But there's a couple that are, these are not greatest hits albums either, because that's not fair. But Run DMC, Raising Hell was a classic album. That album broke a lot of new ground for hip hop. It was, Run DMC was a big name, at that time, probably the biggest name in hip hop but they did on that album they did Walk This Way with Aerosmith oh yeah that's, and that yeah, was huge sure. that was huge yep. for hip hop definitely they did My Adidas yeah, huge that's for hip hop yeah that was huge for hip hop too <laughs> um you have um I think that album had you you talk too much oh boy you never shut up uh I think it had It's Tricky to a Rock or Rock to Rock Mary, Mary, why you bug? I mean, it was a classic album. It was like hip hop was, it was in the year, you had 1986. Hip hop was, I think that was the album that I would say proved that hip hop is here to stay. Up until that yeah. point, a lot of hip hop, and I'm eating gum, I know. And for the dude who wants me to hit the Jolly Ranchers, stop it. Get some yo, help. yo, yo, hold, hold on here. We got to bring this John to an end. This has oh, to self-destruct. Wait a minute. If you are not a Patreon supporter, then this message will self-destruct in five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Goodbye, non-Patreon supporter. <laughs>